Good morning and welcome to the Wavy Digital Desk. I'm your host, Sarah Good, and we're here with Katie McDonough, the Community Executive Director for the Alzheimer's Association, Southeastern Virginia Chapter. Katie, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Oh, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, this walk means a lot to, you know, some here at Wavy as well. And Stephanie Hudson is going to be out this weekend. But I want to talk about your whole season of walks today, what it means and sort of what it means for this community down in southeastern Virginia. So, you know, to start, I mean, can you just tell us a little bit about, you know, what's planned this fall? You know, what walks we have coming up? Yeah, so the Walk to End Alzheimer's is a national event. They are walks in every community across the country. Um, it is the largest um, event that raises awareness and raises funds about um, for those who, uh, to impact those who are living with Alzheimer's disease and their families. Um, right here in Hampton Roads, we have six walks. Um, our uh, our next walk is coming up this weekend on Saturday um, in Suffolk, um, and we're super excited about that. But we have um, uh, walks coming up in Gloucester, on the Eastern Shore, in Newport News, Williamsburg, and then uh, wrapping it up with uh, Chesapeake. And these walks mean a lot to people across the nation. They happen nationally, as you said. But, you know, to hear at Hampton Roads, I mean, what have you seen over the course of, you know, planning for these events, getting ready for these events? How are people down here sort of coming together for them? You know, it's pretty amazing to see people who are impacted by this disease in all different ways um, come together together. Um, I, I, you know, we had a kickoff uh, back in July for our Chesapeake walk, and um, I met a couple there, uh, one, uh, you know, woman and her wife who is living with a diagnosis in the early stages, and her, her wife turned to her during the event and saw her smiling from ear to ear, and she said, why are you so happy? And she said, because I found my people. And that's really what the walk is for a lot of people. It is a community, right? Within a community coming together to, you know, just share, we're not alone in this fight, that there are people here who care and um, who want to um, cure this disease ultimately. Absolutely. And, you know, you can see here from the B-roll playing, if you're watching, that you all provided and then some, you know, just out um, at some events here locally. How many people are there? How they're all coming together? You know, kids of all ages, I guess you're seeing right there. How important is it that, you know, the whole community comes out, you know, from kids to maybe people, um, you know, living or caretaking, you know, helping with the disease? Yeah, I mean, this this event is designed for everyone. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting people involved it, from all walks of life in our community. We know that Alzheimer's disease can develop in our brains upwards of 20 years prior to the onset of symptoms. And we're also learning from the research, just like other disease processes, that lifelong health, lifelong brain health is incredibly important to the risk factors in developing Alzheimer's in later life. So we really see this as an opportunity to educate and impact people of all ages and from all walks of life. Absolutely. And, you know, it's an important piece, obviously, to mention that this walk is to is it to help find a cure, to help that funding, to help sort of grow with that research. I mean, can you just tell us a little bit about that aspect? So first of all, it is awareness raising, right? It is the opportunity to elevate um, the issue of this disease in our local communities. It is also um, our largest fundraiser here at the Alzheimer's Association and the funds that we raise help keep programming in our local community. So we are the organization that is um, educating the most around um, healthy brain, around the impacts and risk factors for Alzheimer's. We are also um, elevating this disease locally to drive more research. We know that in the past 10 years, being able to um, you know, elevate this disease and get more people involved in and in having their voices heard has helped us increase both public and private research funding. And that research has gotten us to the place that we are today where we do have 
a treatment and we have a pipeline for more treatments coming. Um, it also impacts the science around um, diagnosis and making a diagnosis more accessible and um, earlier in the disease process. So, um, and, it, and it helps us drive partnerships here to reach people who are traditionally underserved um, and may be at a higher risk for this disease. So we know that African-Americans are twice as likely to develop this disease than their white counterparts. Um, Hispanics are one and a half times likely. And so we want to make sure that we are doing and continuing our grassroots work with these communities in particular throughout Hampton Roads to make sure they have access to that education, um, to the support that they need, and so we can help um, steer them into the direction of diagnosis. Absolutely. And you talk about, you know, touching the different communities and underserved communities. And you all here, I think it's really important to note, do not just do one walk, say, in Norfolk or Virginia Beach. You really do try to, you know, cover the cities and cover the area of, of who you're interacting with and where these events are taking place. Yeah. And the fun thing, I think, about walk is that every walk, is different. You know, we have this, um, there's, there's some things that are common, but um, every, every walk has its own unique reflection of the community that it's in, its own, you know, kind of culture, its own feel. Um, and, and that's really fun for me to see, you know, I go to all of the walks in, in the fall, and it's just really fun for me to see how different um, communities and volunteers really manifest the walk in their own community. And I, you know, You'll you'll note that there are some flowers. You see flowers, um, and th those those are what we call our promise garden flowers, and they're a huge part of the walk to end Alzheimer's. Each color represents a different role in um, how you're impacted by the disease. So purple represents someone you you have lost someone to the disease. Um, yellow represents that you're a care partner for someone who is living with a diagnosis. Blue represents someone living with a diagnosis. And then uh, orange is someone who is an advocate um, for those who are impacted by the disease. And so we have this beautiful promise garden ceremony, which we're very grateful that Stephanie Hudson from Wavy will be leading us through um, this weekend. And it's very moving um, to, to everybody has their own flower. Every walker gets one. And we go through this um, beautiful ceremony where we raise those flowers high. Um, and then there's finally one last flower that wraps us up in that promise garden, and that's the white flower. Um, and there's only one of those. And that white flower represents the first survivor. And we usually love to have a young person holding that flower um, in the ceremony because it represents the future that we're, we're moving towards, um, where we, we hope one day to have hundreds and thousands of white flowers um, in that garden. Absolutely. And, you know, you started off the conversation talking about, you know, it affects a lot of people in different ways, but to have flowers that signify that, that you can put together in this community, but also maybe have those with like flowers or things, you know, form a community in that way, I, I assume too, to find people that are in your boat. Yep. Yeah, and we see that that's one of the roles that I love the most about the organization that we play locally, right? That's that, that grassroots um, community work really helps to bring people together who are walking through life in a different way because of this disease, right? So, you know, we see folks who come together who are, you know, we, we have a group right now that's forming of the... Um, of those living in the early stages and their care partners. And, you know, we're able to kind of be the convener of folks in that community um, so that they can be empowered to form, you know, their own group and work with, you know, a volunteer facilitator to have a group that meets monthly where they can offer each other support. Um, so we really I love to see people come together because of um, events like the Walk to End Alzheimer's or our other programs and services um, that we are able to really empower them um, to support one another. Absolutely, because as much as it's an event to to raise money and funds and research and awareness, it's also, as you said in your beginning, with an example of 
why someone was excited to be there to meet your community and to meet the people yeah. that are walking with you through this. And I wanted to just highlight, you're saying care partner. And, um, and I think that is a term that, um, you know, hopefully is sticking around, but that I think it was, you know, even just this week, I think on the Today Show, actually, um, I think it was Bruce Willis's wife that used the term and explained it, you know, in the show. And I thought that was such a, you know, a term that I really haven't heard much at all, but, but you seem to be using it too. And so do you mind just sharing, you know, what that means, you know, at least to you all? Yeah, I mean, we um, at the Alzheimer's Association use both those terms, care partner and caregiver. I think personally, I'm really drawn to the term care partner because um, it, to me, represents a two-way exchange, right? That this really is a partnership that um, folks are walking through together. Um, And it really, for me, you know, I want to as devastating as this disease is, I want to really empower people who are living with the diagnosis to feel a part of that journey. I mean, I think that can often help in um, in really, uh, you know, dealing with the fear that comes, right? And I also think, you know, the wonderful thing about the research is it's not going to happen overnight, right? We are, we are going to have progressively move to better treatment and better diagnosis. But as we do, the reality of this disease is going to change, thankfully. People um, will you know, live longer. They, we will be able to delay uh, a lot of the symptoms of this disease. So people may have a diagnosis, but they're not pr- progressing as quickly as they are today or have been in the past. And so they really will be more time to be in that stage of partnership. So for me, it's kind of starting to think differently about this disease because thankfully we are making progress um, to hopefully change the reality for many, many, many folks around the world who are impacted. Absolutely. And, you know, to anyone watching that is in that boat or anyone this weekend, I think that's a really, you know, nice way to, to look at it too. It's a team too, as well with other people that are also care partners or experiencing, um, you know, the effects of Alzheimer's or, you know, loved ones or family or friends that are sort of in this world with you. Um, I did want to just jump to, you know, this weekend, last weekend, unfortunately, it was canceled after, you know, the tropical storm effects. Postponed. 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 Oh, postponed. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so we'll yeah, talk about so, um, yeah. when Chesapeake is moving to. Yeah, yeah. So, um, unfortunately, like a lot of folks, we had to postpone um, this event uh, this this past weekend, um, but we will be holding the Chesapeake Walk on November 18th. Um, so, we're really excited, the city of Chesapeake has just been um, so wonderful to help us try and make this happen. Um, And so we're excited. Everything, we've got most everything on board, uh, you know, vendors, volunteers um, are lining up to be there with us on the 18th. Um, so we're excited. We're excited about that. That's amazing. Yeah. I just got, I was going to say everyone in Chesapeake come to Suffolk this weekend, which they still should do, but, um, but yeah, and if you can't make it to the 18th, you know, come on out to one of our other walks. I will say, um, the easiest way to find out dates and, um, locations is to go to alz.org slash walk. And then you can just type in your zip code and those walks will pop up. Perfect. And I can link that as well for anyone watching now or later on wavy.com. So they'll be able to go to that too. Um, And I guess, you know, the last thing I want to ask, you know, action steps for people that are looking to support, they're looking to sign up or they're looking to donate. Is that all something they should do on, um, you know, on the website? I guess I also want to just ask, even if you are not personally touched by Alzheimer's in your life, you know, you want the community to come out to support, right? Even if you, you're not necessarily carrying that flower, but just to be there to walk alongside. Yeah, absolutely. So um, first of all, there are so many ways to get involved in this event. Um, it is a volunteer driven event. We could not do this without the volunteer leadership that we have driving um, the walk to end Alzheimer's. So if you're interested in volunteering, um, you can find out more information at that website. You can we always encourage you if you're coming out to a walk, register ahead of time 
so we can communicate with you ahead of um, ahead of the walk. Uh, we also uh, want we want folks to donate. That is a big part of this event. Um, and it's empowering to be able to give in that way. And what's so fun is there's even community formed around um, how people raise funds, right? Um, we have, you know, poker runs. We have um, people who are doing rides like uh, with, you know, the convertible rides and motorcycle rides. We have folks that you know, um, get together and like bake cookies. There's all kinds of things that folks do to raise funds. And that that really involves their community as well. Um, so you can also donate directly there or um, when you register, you can learn more. We will share with you more um, as a new participant about how to, how to fundraise and uh, how to make that fun. Definitely. Well, Katie, you know, is there anything else, you know, involving the walks or even involving, you know, helping out or, or sort of supporting year round? Yes. So we um, also, as I said, we uh, deliver programs and services throughout the Hampton Roads area. And we do that with volunteers as well, whether that's an education program, a support group, um, whether it's helping us to make connections in new communities, um, maybe attending health fairs or being our ambassadors in the community. We have all kinds of ways that folks can get involved um, on that care and support side as well, and also become advocates and raise their voices to, to our um, municipal and congressional leaders. So um, again, if you're interested in learning more, you can go um, to alz.org. Uh, slash volunteer, and that'll um, share with you all the different ways to get involved. And I would just say, um, you know, lastly, the Alzheimer's Association is always here for people who are impacted through our 24-7 helpline. Um, and um, that number is 1-800-272-3900. It is always available 365 days a year. So if you're hearing this right now and you want to learn more about the Alzheimer's Association, you can call that number. If you just need someone to talk to because you're struggling or you're worried about a loved one or worried about yourself, you can call that number too. So we encourage you to reach out, get plugged in, get more involved um, in the organization um, however you want and however you need us. Well, Katie, thank you so much for being here this morning. And I think we're going to, you know, see a lot more, especially as Stephanie Hudson is out in Suffolk this weekend, but then as the events continue in October and then now November. So, yeah. um, you know, we're so excited about that. So thank you so much for joining. And, um, you know, all this will be on wavy.com if you're watching with more information. And I'll link everything that Katie said about where to volunteer, how to get involved with the walk. So thank you so much for everyone for tuning in this morning.